everyone and welcome back to another video or welcome if you're new my name is Courtney and on my channel I react to all things America and other stuff as well Ooh. so if you're interested definitely hit that subscribe button down below I'd love to have you in today's video we have a guaranteed video request from Trey he has recommended me to watch Thomas Ward Kusta and I think that's how you say his name please correct me if I'm wrong down below though guys and the Medal of Honor an updated history guy episode so we're going to learn all about him today I assume um hopefully you guys are learning something new with me today in this video as well but if you've got anything to add definitely feel free to leave a comment down below I learn a lot not only from the videos but from you guys who leave informative comments in the comment section which is amazing and I thank you so much for that uh, so yeah, without any further ado, we are just going to get straight into the video. Thank you so much Trey for sending this one through and let's do it. I want you to imagine a military career. A young man so intent on serving the Union during the Civil War that he lied about his age and enlisted at just the age of 16. A young man who, as a private, served in the center of the line in the deadliest major battle oh of the Civil War. A young man who, over the course of the war, rose in rank, enlisted as a private, and by the end of the war was a brevet major. A young man who, through acts of exceptional heroism, was awarded not one, but two medals of honor. The first Dang. soldier in the United States Army to be so honored. You would think that such a soldier would be famous, might be one of the most famous soldiers of the Civil War, and yet there was such a soldier, and his name is barely remembered, for a very simple reason. It was overshadowed by the name of his much more famous older brother. And that is too bad, because the military career of Thomas Ward Custer, Custer. Sorry, deserves guys. to be remembered. Emmanuel Custer and Maria Ward Kirkpatrick from rural Ohio had seven children together, but the first two died in infancy. Thomas Custer, born in 1845, was the third boy to survive infancy, after his older brother Nevin, born in 1842, and his oldest brother, George Armstrong Custer, born in 1839. A younger brother, Boston, and a sister, Margaret, would be born later. George Custer, who the family called Aughty over his first attempts to pronounce his middle name when he was a toddler, was a charismatic, handsome, and athletic boy, and he set his mind on a career in the military. He secured an appointment to West Point and graduated as an officer in the U.S. Army in 1861, just a few months after the first shots of the Civil War. Well, naturally, the brothers, who all looked up to George, who was the leader of the pack, all wanted to follow him into the service. Nevin tried, he enlisted, but he had an ill-timed bout of rheumatism and was mustered out after only a couple of weeks. And Thomas, the next oldest, was just 16, two years too young to sign up for the army. But that didn't stop him from trying. He tried, he was refused due to his age. He tried again and lied about his age, and in September of 1861 was mustered in as a private in Company H of the 21st Ohio Volunteer Infantry. Oh the 21st gosh. Ohio was part of the 45,000 strong Union Army of the Cumberland under the command of Major General William Rosecrans. In December 1862, they faced the Confederate Army of Tennessee, commanded by General Braxton Bragg, in front of the Tennessee town of Murfreesboro, along a freezing narrow waterway known as Stones River. 17-year-old Private Tom Custer and the boys of the 21st Ohio were smack in the middle of the line. For three days, Bragg threw his army at Rosecrans. The Union lines were thrown back. They bent, but they did not break. In two massive attacks, Bragg was unable to dislodge Rosecrans. Realizing that Rosecrans would continue to get reinforcements, Bragg withdrew. The battle was a tactical draw, but the Union held the ground, and the Confederacy lost the hope of controlling Central Tennessee, a critical event in the campaign in the West. Of the 76,400 soldiers who participated in the battle on both sides, 24,645 were killed or wounded. It was, proportionally, the highest casualty rate of any major battle of the Civil War. The 21st Ohio, who captured an artillery battery in a counterattack, took 159 casualties. After the Battle of Stones River, Tom managed to secure a position as an orderly for a succession of brigade and division commanders until he was eventually on the staff of General Ulysses S. Grant and promoted to the rank of corporal. 
It was in that role that he saw some of the most vicious battles in the West, including Missionary Ridge and Chickamauga. But in October of 1864, Otty, who was by then a Brigadier General of Cavalry, managed to secure Tom a commission as a lieutenant in the 6th Michigan Cavalry in a position as his brother's aide-de-camp. The final phase of the U.S. Civil War occurred in the spring of 1865, when the forces of Ulysses S. Grant finally broke through Robert E. Lee's defense works and ended the 10-month Siege of Petersburg. But Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia managed to escape, and Lee realized that his only hope of continuing the war was to reach North Carolina and join up with the Confederate Army there under the command of General Joseph Johnston. Grant knew that if he could prevent Lee from getting to North Carolina, he could end the war. The Appomattox Campaign was a series of running battles between Grant's advance forces and Lee's rear guard, and Custer's cavalry was in the thick of the fight. Time and again, Thomas distinguished himself in the chase. He was given brevet promotions. A brevet rank can mean a couple of things, but in Tom Custer's case, it meant a warrant giving a commissioned officer a higher rank title as a reward for gallantry or meritorious conduct, but without conferring the authority, precedence, or pay of a real rank. Such promotions were common during the Civil War. Tom was a brevet major by April. He had a horse shout out from under him at the Battle of Five Forks on April 1st. On April 3rd, Custer's cavalry engaged three regiments of Confederate cavalry near a place called Namazine Church. It was part of Lee's rear guard. And in a short, sharp action between cavalry units, Tom led the charge. He jumped over a hastily built Confederate breastwork and there captured three Confederate officers, 11 Confederate soldiers, Oh and God. the battle flag of the 2nd North Carolina Cavalry. For his gallant action that day, Tom Custer was awarded the Medal of Honor. The decisive battle of the Appomattox Campaign came just three days later Fearless. on a hill in front of a little creek that was called Sailor's Creek. Grant had finally caught up to Lee, and two of Lee's three corps were forced to engage in the desperate action at the Battle of Sailor's Creek. The Army of Northern Virginia was literally fighting for its very life, and in the brutal combat, when the Union infantry could not force the Rebs to break, the cavalry was ordered to charge. Tom Custer was the first cavalryman to get across the second line of Confederate breastworks, where he grabbed a hold of yet another Confederate battle flag. But the flag bearer drew his pistol and shot Tom Custer point blank in the face, so what? close that it caused powder burns. The bullet entered under his cheek, skimmed along his skull, and exited behind his right ear. And Tom Custer, in one motion, still hanging onto the flag, drew his pistol and killed the flag bearer. His face bleeding profusely, he triumphantly rode back with the battle flag what of the 2nd the Virginia he... Reserve Battalion. He rode up to his brother and proudly proclaimed, Armstrong, the damned Rebs have shot me, but I got my flag. He tried to return to the fight. His brother had to have him forcibly restrained to be taken He's to the surgeons nice. to treat his wound. Astoundingly, Tom Custer had captured his second Confederate battle flag and earned his second Medal of Honor in a period of just four days. He was the first soldier in U.S. history and one of only a handful to receive two Medals of Honor. The desperate, brutal Battle of Sailor's Creek was the death blow of the Confederacy. Lee lost more than 8,000 soldiers killed or wounded. Lee surrendered to Grant three days later. After the war, Tom Custer stayed in the Army. He had the regular rank of lieutenant, but the brevet rank of lieutenant colonel. Awfully good for someone who signed up as a private. He followed his brother's career in the West and the Indian Wars, and was with his brother on the Black Hills Expedition in 1874 that discovered gold. And he was with his brother on that fateful day, June 25th of 1876, when the 7th Cavalry faced off against a force of Sioux and Cheyenne warriors in what has become known as the Battle of of the Little Bighorn. After the battle, Tom's body was found a few feet away from that of his more famous brother. Nearby was the oh, body of his man. younger brother, Boston. Also on the battlefield was oh, the body it's... of his brother-in-law, James oh, Calhoun, husband of his sister Margaret, and the body of their nephew, Henry Armstrong Reed, who had accompanied his uncle's expedition as a civilian and was just 18 years old. That oh, iconic battle was a bad day for the Custer family. Tom's remains were removed to the Cavalry Cemetery at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and the stone can still be seen there today. 
Thomas Custer was a brilliant soldier, but he lived his life in his brother's shadow. George Armstrong Custer was a larger-than-life personality and a bold and gifted commander of cavalry. But in 1865, when he was asked about his brother, in a moment of honesty, he said, Do you want to know what I think of him? Tom should have been the general, and I the lieutenant. Wow. Thomas Ward Custer, a hero of the Union, was an extraordinary soldier who deserves to be remembered. I'm the History Guy, and I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series of short snippets of forgotten history about 10 minutes long. And if you did enjoy it, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, which is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. And if you'd like more snippets of forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thomas Ward Custer. What a very, very, very interesting life, right? I only started learning about the American Civil War last year through my channel and my videos, which is amazing. And I'm just shocked at how much loss of life there was in general. So it's incredible that Thomas Ward Custer, Thomas Custer, lied about his age. He was only 16 years old. Isn't that insane? I feel like 16 year olds now are just making TikToks and whatever. And I don't, I can't imagine any 16 year old going to fight in war. Like who would want to, you know, when there's an active war going on. And the fact that he moved up through the ranks so quickly so brave it says a lot about his family as well how a lot of them were involved in the army i don't know if that was a normal thing in the american civil war back then i don't know if there was a draft i'm not quite sure but how sad though that how they all lost their lives on that one battle that's so sad imagine all of their family members back home and like hearing the news like not one not two not three not four people in their family died you know they all fought to the end together you know which could be quite comforting for their family not that i can imagine but um that's just my perspective from a totally total outsider you know but they all fought to the end together but yeah i've never heard of his older brother either so maybe i'll look into him as well but yeah looking through the comments of this video it seems like a lot of people don't know about him so i just think there's so many people in history that do deserve to be remembered for their sacrifice there's a lot of people who deserve to be remembered you know what i mean like there's so many stories unknown that should be shown to the world you know, like people went through so much in history for us to live in the way we do today, you know? It's amazing that Custer got two Medal of Honors within four days. Hearing this story, it's like, he's literally fearless, literally fearless. He got shot in the face. You know, I've been watching stories like this about various people in history in the military they get shot and they still keep going and it really shows what kind of warrior they are you know what i mean like no normal person can do that and it just really speaks volumes about who they are and what they believe in and their i guess character and what's the word like perseverance and um, I don't know if I'm getting the word right, but their drive, I guess, for the bigger picture, for the greater good. Yeah, I guess, I don't know, I guess like fighting for the country, the greater good, and what happens to them, they're like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine, like, let's keep going, let's keep going. And other people have to be like, dude, like, you just got a shot in the face. <laughs> you just stole the battle flag. You've done all, like, you've done really well today. Now let's just settle down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it really does speak volumes for sure. Again, so sad how they all passed in the same battle. Definitely devastating for the family, but for sure they can be proud of what their sons, husbands, brothers, 
did. You know what I mean? Thank you so much, Trey, for seeing me through this video. Another very interesting video from The History Guy. If you want to check out more of The History Guy's videos, I definitely recommend. He's got so many, so many topics of videos on his channel, so I'll leave a link down below. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Did you guys know about the story or not? If you do, and if you got anything to add, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you do have a video recommendation, I will link my video recommendations where you can make video requests on there. Um, apart from that, like this video if you did like it and if you learned something from it. I for sure did, <laughs> because I did not know who Thomas Custer was before this video. Um, and I'm glad that I know about his story now. Again, I feel like People in history like this deserve to be remembered and their stories to be circulated. And of course, there's many other um, amazing people in history that I haven't got into yet. But of course, I look forward to learning more and more as I continue my channel. So thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Mm.